Now, George, I'm going to get into capitalism today, but I saw this, and I know that people have been asking, they're still asking, beating a dead horse, what do you think about same-sex marriage, Jesse? What do you think? It says the discussion is everywhere. What do you say about it? Fine. Well, I know. You want to ask me because if you ask me, then you're going to get a different opinion from everybody else. You're going to get something that's going to stir the discussion and kind of spin the table and then throw the, push the wheel and keep the fortune wheel spinning, uh, for those of you who watch game show reruns. Now, same-sex marriage. It, why, why is the topic same-sex? It should be marriage. The concept of marriage is sexual activity abstinence. Anyone advocating same-sex marriage is advocating marriage. And that means you don't have sex until you're married. So I'll take any, anyone advocate, anyone say, we've got to have marriage for the same sex made legal because otherwise uh, me and my partner will never have sex. Is that what people are saying? Okay, you know, I, there's, there's your discussion. That's it. That's what I think. That's my question. Marriage is about waiting. So if we've got people that are absolutely bent. We need to have a marriage law for same sex. That means that we're going to teach it's immoral for them to be having sex before they're married. Right? Does it, does it all of a sudden become immoral for homosexuals to have homosexual sex before they're married? If not, then what's the point of marriage? If, if, if sex doesn't need to wait for marriage, then just abolish marriage altogether from, from, the, from the legal, like get the government out of it. Make that a religious thing all unto itself with no legal ramifications. If you're worried about taxes, then get civil unions. Same-sex marriage, any, any marriage opinion without advocating uh, sexual abstinence prior to marriage doesn't really support marriage. I mean, it, it, you know, there's, no, there's no point. That's, that's my view. That, that's my comment on it. So I'm, what's my, my opinion of, do I support it or not, George? Uh, boy, that's a, do I support, you know, George, that's a good question. I think you stumped me. George, you know, George has a good a good point here. I don't know whether I support I I don't know that I have an opinion about whether same sex marriage should be legal or not. Uh I mean I, I think it should be called parriage. I, I my opinion is about English. It should be called parriage and and maybe treated differently because everyone's different. Maybe there should be maybe every Every marriage should write up its own contract and define before the government what it is. Maybe a marriage should create a corporation, like a, like a two-person corporation. And, and every corporation has a different charter. You know, make it flexible. Maybe, maybe that's the thing. And, you know, trying to get this one stamp. No, George, I'm not being weird. Why should a man and woman have to fit into this legal box about what their marriage is going to be like? What what if they want to own one house or, or two or five, you know, or or no house at all? I mean, I, I one car, two cars, bank accounts. It's always different. People just marriages have a different culture, no matter how much they love or don't love each other. Why 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 do we rubber stamp the legal definition of marriage? Why? I mean, I mean, be more open. I mean, people really don't they don't really think about these things. But I don't I don't. I don't really know that I advocate for a lot of action anymore, you know, to be honest with you. I just live so much in Futureville. I mean, for me, Trump getting elected was just history waiting to happen for me. And now we've, we've still got people looking at the 25th Amendment as the insanity clause. Trump's, Trump's a nut, and so he's going to go. And, and it's wishful thinking. And I'm like, no way. And I don't want to get political. You want to get political, go to the Times. I'm just saying that I live in the world of, you know, next quarter. Like the next fiscal quarter is already past tense for me. 
I just, I live there. And I don't know everything that's going to happen. I, I just, I just kind of live there and I kind of sort of make half, like I've been getting out of the prediction business. Like at the, at the Pacific Daily Times, I write, I've been writing a lot of predictions and I've sort of toned that down and I'm trying to focus on helping you understand how I see the future. Like how, like what, in what, like, how do I do it? Like, Jesse, how do you, how do you know that? How did you know that was coming? And I'm trying to explain how I see it instead of just making the predictions and being the expert. I'm trying to, trying to explain how I see it more and make, few, make fewer actual predictions. And that's what I'm trying to do at the Pacific Times right now, by the way. If, I mean, if you want to know how to see what's coming and live in the future and have fewer surprises in your life and, and have to eat less crow, uh, I mean, crow sandwiches aren't all that wonderful, so I hear, uh, you can go to the Times. But I, I live in the world of tomorrow. And I, I don't really have much opinion on what political action should happen other than we should listen to each other. We should follow the Bible and try to get along. We should focus on the 80% of the issues we agree on. We should stop letting, I mean, we should, we should stop letting the TV tell us what to think, whatever, which way. Uh, I think we should do the People's Party. But I don't, I don't really... I'm not like for this bill or for that bill. I, it's, you know, it might be a good idea. The only opinion I have is if you take this action, history will go there. If you take that action, history will go another place. And, you know, that's the thing. A lot of people tend to be wrong about which action will lead to what results. That, that's where my opinion really is. History. History teaches us if you go right, you end up somewhere right. If you go left, you end up somewhere left. No, 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 you're not. See, it's a cloverleaf deal. And, you know, okay, which way? Okay, well, maybe not. Which way does history say we're going to go? If we do this, what's going to happen? That's usually what my opinion's about. So I want to give you an idea about capitalism. Getting ahead. Getting ahead. Colin Rush said this this week. He says, people can't get ahead. Well, why is getting ahead of other people a, a, the idea? I mean, that's what getting ahead means. Or, or does he not really know the words that he's using and what they mean? Does he mean people can't get ahead of where they presently are? Because that's not really getting ahead. That, that's moving forward. And we, we really, I mean, you know, the... Attacking big companies isn't going to bring you up. And we all know this. Cutting down others is not going to make you feel better. But all of a sudden, the same people that say that stop saying that when it comes to macroeconomics. You know, the, I, I want to have a better lifestyle. Therefore, I have to make Monsanto have less money. Well, Monsanto may be a bad organization or not. But if Monsanto has less money, that doesn't make your house bigger. And besides, why should you want a bigger house anyway with the world suffering? But there's a lot in economics that we think that, that, that the, the, the big guy has to get smaller for me to get bigger. We know that's not true with social friendships. So why do people think that with economics? I mean, yeah, we've got to change stuff. I mean, the big answer, the big answer to being able to get ahead is intellectual property. Get rid of it. E eliminate all except for living artists who worked alone. You know, like the artist can't transfer the rights to anyone else. But other than that, make patents illegal. Uh, trademarks are fine. Art to the original artist. But other than that, why, why, why worry so much about getting ahead? In, in, in fact, I should probably just get to the point. Eating the bigger fish won't make smaller fish bigger. Putting a glass ceiling above the people above you won't stop you from hitting your head on a glass ceiling. Bringing others down won't help you ascend. Big fish eat little fish. Little fish don't want to be eaten. By keeping the little fish safe, the big fish starve. All you need to do to make all life fair in the pond is to protect the little fish. Preserve their freedom. Attacking big fish is only a distraction such an effective distraction that provoking attack could be a big fish tactic. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.